Hi everyone, it's pumpkin season and you know what that means? Let's decorate some pumpkin cookies. So here I have the Wilton pumpkin cutter. This is the larger size and I'm just going to spread some of my flood icing here. I'm just making, you know, a fun design. You don't have to do this. This is just to have a little fun and make a little design, but we're going to brush it out in a few seconds to cover the whole cookie, not quite to the edge. I want to make sure that I don't see too much black on the edges because we only want it in the middle parts. But I'm going to put some more flood here. That wasn't enough. And then I'm going to make sure it's covered all the way close to the edge, but not over the edge of the cookie. This is going to be our background and give a little dimension to our pumpkin. I'm just using a brush here that I bought at a craft store just to spread the icing easily. And again, it's my flood icing. If you use outline and it's a little bit dry, your icing's thick, then it doesn't spread as nicely. So this is really good. And then I'm going to make two oval eyes. And when you're doing any kind of circular uh, lines, you want to stay kind of close to the cookie. That gives you lots of control over where your line is falling because there's lots of curves. So if you're lifting your bag really high, it's hard to get that icing to attach and stick to the cookie where you want it to. I've added a couple eyeballs in there and we're going to do the mouth here. And you can do any design you'd like. I thought this was something nice, simple and easy. And then I'm going to outline the pumpkin shape. So here I'm just going to outline around the face. And see now that I'm doing a bigger curve, I have my piping bag higher up above the cookie. Because with longer lines, it's easier to go in those circular motions. And I'll get a nice smooth line. And sometimes when you have your piping bag a little bit higher, it gives you more of a view of where you're going with your piping bag instead of having it super close and sometimes you can't really see where you're going on the edge. Then again as you come back down and touch down to the end point you want to bring your bag down slowly so that you connect your icing. And with the same consistency, so this is my outline, I'm going to do some squiggly lines around his face. And so these areas are a little bit narrow, they're smaller so this prevents the craters. I don't wait for it to dry. I just do those squiggles and I flood right on top. My original outline of the outside of the cookie and the face has dried. You can kind of see this slight color difference between the flood and the outline that has dried. And I like to dry those because, especially around the eyes and the mouth, if you don't dry your outline, sometimes when you're flooding, you're pushing the outline inwards with your flood. So when it dries, it stays in place nicely and you don't have to worry about your flood moving that outline around. And here and there I'm wiggling my bag when I'm flooding and that's just to smooth out the icing or cover a little bit more area with it. So I'm going to set this aside to dry and you can see the color has changed now. It's still a bit shiny, so it's crusted over. The top has been dry, but the inside of the icing is not quite dry, but it's enough for us to do the next steps. So I'm going to add a little stem here, and then we're going to do the outside of the pumpkin. Notice that I didn't do, you know, the left side first and then the middle and then the right. I did the middle first, so then I can do both of the outsides at the same time. And this is kind of just planning a bit so that you do one section and then the next sections you want to do are opposite and they're not touching each other. So that way one section dries and you can do two sections the next time. And that gives you that nice separation in the icing and it gives you that little pumpkin bump that we like to see. And again, I'm just adding that little squiggle with my outline icing and I'm flooding right on top. And when I get to the seams, I'm just using my piping peg to push the flood against the seam. Then you can go in with your scribe if necessary to pull it right to the corners. Sometimes you can't get in there with your flood. You don't want to go too much on the other section. So just use your scribe. It should help a lot. And there you have it. A great 3D pumpkin. And you can customize it and make any face you'd like. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial. As always, happy baking.